Being an entrepreneur is difficult, but it's incredibly rewarding. And why it's rewarding is because you establish and you prove to yourself and everybody around you that you have the ability to create something from nothing. All right, what cool. Do you love? Rolling? Yeah. I'm passionate about being able to create things. And that can be creating from video to music to creating entrepreneurial endeavors like building your own company. We're here in my theater. For me, having a room like this is not so much a sign of, or a status of success. It's a sign of passion because it's the passions that drive people towards success. It's never the quest for money. It's the quest to fulfill your own passion. I think I realized from a really early age that I cared about the power to make things. And whether those things were physical objects or businesses, uh, that I was interested in that. And so when I found people that were running a business, I would ask them questions even from my early teen years. So I think that was always an interest of mine. What really, I think, exploded it was when I started meeting successful entrepreneurs because that changed everything. If you want to be able to do something well, you want to model somebody that is already doing it well. That's the number one proven way to do something well. And the SCA gives you the opportunity to get close to people that have already done it, and you can now model those people. I got involved in the SCA because it's the kind of organization that I wish had existed when I was starting out as a young entrepreneur in my early 20s because I thought I knew everything, and in reality, there were so many things that I didn't know about. There were kind of the hidden rocks just under the surface of the water waiting to sink my boat, and I went through so many hard experiences, and it's so easy after you've been through those experiences to share them with other people and to maybe help them avoid some of those things or maybe maximize the potential for their success. And so it's just such a simple and easy thing to do to go give a little bit back to all the people that had mentored and helped me along the way in informal ways to come back and do it in a more formal way in the SCA where it can really do even more people a lot of good. Entrepreneurship is full of highs and lows. So you have huge successes and you'll have a lot of failures. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is you learn the most from the failures. Mm -hmm. And so those are the experiences that you take with you that will help make the next success even bigger. And so I remember both the highs of the successes, but also the failures, because the failures to me are the most valuable thing for me to take forward. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to learn that failure is going to be a constant companion. Whether you're actually failing at the moment or just fearing failing, it's always going to be there in the back of your mind. And in fact, it's that fear of failure that drives you forward to success. But you shouldn't fear the failures. You should actually embrace them because when they come, they come with valuable lessons. And so you could lose the game, but you haven't really lost the war. You know, it's a battle and war kind of analogy. And I think that ultimately you choose when you fail because you've only truly ultimately failed when you give up. As an entrepreneur, you are an idea machine. You have ideas about things that you want to build that come to you all the time. And ideas are kind of like your children and you fall in love with them. And what I try to tell entrepreneurs who are starting out is that that is actually a little bit dangerous because sometimes ideas are before their time or they're not feasible for where you are or how you can resource them. And so you have to pick and choose amongst those ideas. So I think a more constructive way to think about it is instead of your children is to actually think about them as cattle. That you're raising these cattle and you're ultimately going to take them to market and sell them them. So the cattle are not your pets and you shouldn't fall in love with them. They're tools that you're going to use and they drive your business forward. That's really what your ideas are as an entrepreneur. So how many years have you been involved with the Sacramento Entrepreneurship Academy? I've been invited to be a guest lecturer at the SCA for the last three years and it's been incredibly fun. So why do you do it? I do it because it's a way to give something back and maybe help young entrepreneurs who are out there just starting out avoid some of the pitfalls that I had to crawl over myself without a lot of help when I was starting out. The SEA is hard to get into, and I think that's the way it should be because it's a grueling thing being a successful entrepreneur. And those of us that are taking our time to come and teach people that want to learn these skills that are incredibly valuable, both in financially and personally, we wanna make sure that those people are actually gonna put the skills to work because entrepreneurs build the structure of our society. They're really one of the remaining few classes of heroes that are out there because they help build jobs and help drive our economy forward. So I think in the future, the SEA plays a key role now in educating young entrepreneurs that want to go forward and take on that challenge and also, I think, the joy of being able to execute against their own vision. 
I think it was a lemonade stand when I was 12, and uh, I underestimated cost of sales, had poor return on margin, and uh, went out of business in an afternoon. Uh, and I think it's a lot of those kind of failures uh, through life that actually teach you the things that you need to look for that are keys to success.